What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today I want to talk about Gecko Trading Bot, the Entree function and event system. So the Entree function is a method, I mean if you go into the actual strategy, and I'm going to show you this right now. If you go into the actual creating strategy right here in the documentation from Axe Mike, the creator of Gecko, he actually doesn't list on trade as a function that you can use, as a method or function that you can use within your strategy. But I came across this in this strategy called BB Async, created by Mark SEH. He actually also created Green Gecko. So right off the bat, I'm thinking, hmm, maybe this particular method on trade is only available on his fork version of um, Green Gecko. So, but it turns out, on trade, if you look it up, if you actually do a search in GitHub on the closed issues, you see that there's actually 12 tickets related to on trade. This is a function that has been built into Gecko some time ago. I eventually found a ticket that's related to this. So, work crew, his idea with on trade is this when Gecko do your strategy, issues a trade to the exchange, whether it's a buy or sell, your strategy doesn't get back any information on whether the trade is completed or not. So that's quite a bit of a problem. For one, a couple of videos ago, I, meant to, I, I talked about rejected trades, where if a trade gets rejected, your strategy doesn't know about it. So this is one way the on-trade function is able to give you this information. At least that's the way I understand it. And, and the other thing is, for completed trades, you still want to have an idea of what price your um, Gecko actually executed trade on. For example, if your strategy is your buy order at $5, but the market is moving against you, the price kept going up. And based on Gecko's sticky order feature, it'll move that buy order to the top of the order book. So let's say the prices kept going up from $5 to $5.05. Gecko's going to cancel the order and going to reissue a new order at $5.05. And so on and so forth. So let's say that the final order was $5.15. Your strategy doesn't know about that. So your strategy, if it's basing off of a particular price point, thinks that it actually bought at $5, and then it saw, hey, you know what? The price is now $5.10, and it's a good time to sell. So it'll make a $0.10 cents profit, but in reality, it's actually losing $0.05 cents because it bought again at $5.15. So that's why it's important for Gecko to pass that information that it gets back from the exchange to your strategy. And that's what Entree is able to do. So I'm going to show you how Entree works now. So the first thing I did was actually just copy um, Axmite's very basic strategy, the strategy template. And I just basically, I created a strategy called Telegram RC. So it's a strat that doesn't do anything except to let you remotely control Gecko via Telegram. Because again, it just basically is all the template code, nothing else. And then I added this section right here, strat that on trade. And I also added uh, strat that on command. This this portion is the telegram portion that actually lets um, you control Gecko remotely via telegram. But back to this part right here, the on trade part. All I'm doing right now is just have Gecko pass the trade information back into the strategy through this on trade method. So literally every time when a trade gets completed, the strategy will get that information. So what that looks like is this. So I issue a buy order through Telegram, as you see here, and then Telegram would send back a send back message saying buy order received, sending to exchange, and then in the exchange you'll see that it has actually it has a buy order open. So and then when it actually completes the buy order, like it says here, completed five minutes ago, what happens is inside terminal or if you're running in Visual Studio Code in the debug console, this is all the information that Gecko got back from the exchange. So, well, mostly all the information. I mean, there's some information added itself, obviously, like the action that was taken was by. Advice ID is uh, tracking to track um, which advice it was. The amount, the balance. These are the really important part, like how much was bought. This is the price that it actually paid for. So if your strategy issued the buy signal at 32.25, that wasn't the actual buy price. The buy price is 32.32. So in here, Entree has all this information. So now what you can do is, let's say that if you were storing the buy price, you had a like variable. Let's say that you had a variable where it's like you store the buy price, right? And 
you default to zero at first. In the check function, you normally would store that after this that advice is let's say buy, right? Something like that, where you know, let's say actually it would be if something, if if something, right? But in here you also would put something like buy price equals to candle dot close because that's what your assumption was, right? That when Gecko issues the buy order, that's the price it executes at. But that's not the case because in reality, what you should be doing is getting that information from the on trade function. What you should be doing is putting buy price equals to trade that price because that's the object. The object itself is called trade right here, right? If you look at the object, look inside the object like I have here in the in the debug console, you'll see that trade that price or effective price. I mean, effective price is probably includes the fee if you're paying any fees. So you might want to use that for your calculation instead if your exchange charge you a fee. So, but if it doesn't, you could use trade that price, and that is the price that the trade was executed at. So that's the basic of on the on trade function. There's so much you can do with the on trade function. You can also capture the balance and amount in a blotter in the tr inside the strategy itself. So that's another thing you can do. But the main thing is it gives you the correct information that you get from the exchange and not kind of like a guessing information that you you are storing based on the time when the buy or sell order was sent out. So that's the on trade. Let's go into the event system. The event system is quite a bit complicated. If you look at Gecko architecture uh, from the Gecko website, so there's something called a Gecko stream. So this is like, if you see here, this is where it talks to exchange, the trade batcher, candle manager, all these like the trading engine code. And then you have something here called a Gecko stream where it receives the candle data. And from here, all these are plugins. The trading advisor is a plugin. The paper trader is a plugin. The real trader, which is trader.js, is a plugin. And other plugin A and B, you could think of it like maybe the Telegram plugin is one of them. The other one could be like Push Bullet, Twitter, email. There's different kind of all kinds of plugin available for Gecko. So they not only take in event information. Again, this is like an event information. Candle Creator creates like an event. So whenever it sends a candle data, it's, it sends it in an event. So it, it sends it to Trading Advisor and it sends it to other plugins as well. Any basically any plugin that listen to the Gecko stream will receive that event that came across. So as long as they register it. So the plugins themselves, not only can they receive events, they can also generate events as well. So that's how the Telegram bot works in, in terms of remotely controlling Gecko because whenever you send a command to Telegram, through Telegram, it actually sends out an event saying that is that there's a command event telling Gecko that it's got an event that it sent out to all the other plugins, including Trading Advisor and Paper Trader or Real Trader. And these plugins will process that command, whether it's a buy order or sell order. So that's the idea of the event system. The problem is it basically revolves around these two files, subscription and plugins. Plugins actually list all the different plugins that's available to Gecko, like the Telegram bot, like the IRC bot, the, all the different uh, trading advisor, all the different plugins available to Gecko. And then subscription is the different events that are generated and the different handlers that will actually process the events. So now the problem is your strategy is not a plugin. So how is it going to receive the events from Gecko if it is not a plugin? Theoretically, you can probably add your strategy over here and make it a plugin. But the correct way to do this is to do it through Trading Advisor. Because Trading Advisor, along with base trading method, these two files combined with your strategy creates everything the strategy needs in, in addition to receiving events. Because Trading Advisor, if you look back under the diagram over here is listed right here. It is actually it is a plugin and it receives Gecko streams. So and then you see here right here actor that prototype that process trade completed. So all of these here are called handlers. So these handlers will actually process any of the events that's being sent out by Gecko or by other plugins. So the process trade completed event. If you go back to the event section, there's also an events page right here. The events page has a list of all the different events that's available for Gecko. And the one that we're looking at right now is trade completed. So the trade completed event provides a, uh, a bunch of information about a particular completed trade. And then 
To subscribe to it, you can subscribe to this event by registering the process trade completed method. And that's actually already done in Trading Advisor. So again, you see it after that prototype that process trade completed. That's the current code um, part of Gecko. So it's already processing this event. So any plugin that wanted to listen to the, that this event have to have this block of code. So Pushbullet is another plugin, for example, also had this block of code, right? Pushbullet that prototype that process trade completed. The whole point is it has to have this part here, process trade completed. So whenever a trade completed event is sent out through the Gecko stream, push bullet, if it's enabled, will process it because it has that particular block of code in here to process that event. So same thing for Trade Advisor. So Trading Advisor has that block of code and we'll, talk a, we'll take a look at that block of code. So inside that block of code, it's really just one line. It is this that strategy that process trade. And that particular function is actually inside base trading method. As I mentioned before, base trading method, trading advisor, they work together with your strategy to provide everything you need. So inside process trade, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Like, you know, it's actually resetting the triggers and um, setting the direction, so on and so forth. Don't worry about that so much. But look at this. This that on trade. And it has the trade in there. So this that on trade, remember I was mentioning it previously? It's actually being called right here. So essentially, when the event come across in the Gecko stream, Trading Advisor picks it up, runs this function process trade, which is inside base trading method. And inside base trading method, it runs the on trade function. And the on trade function itself, going back to the strategy, will provide the information that your strategy needs by having that trade object sent over from Trade Advisor. So in this way, your strategy can listen to any plugin as long as Trading Advisor is listening for that particular event that's generated by the plugin. So going back to Trading Advisor here, remember I mentioned that your strategy can get trade error information through the on trade function. It's not exactly true because it turns out this block of code right here that I have commented out, I actually just added it myself just now. This is not part of the base code for Gecko. I'm going to uncomment it. And you'll see all it's really doing is this enabling Trading Advisor to listen to the event called Trade Error and actually uh, use this handler, Process Trade Error, to actually uh, do something about that particular event. So in this case, all I did was just got that same line of code from Process Trade Complete and put that in here. So all that will do really is just let the on trade function know that an error trade has, also, has occurred. So now not only will it capture completed trades in the on-trade function, it now will also capture error trades in the on-trade function. So I'm going to show you guys that, how that works right now. So I'm just going to run it right here. So everything's running. So I'm going to go back into Telegram. And I'm just going to issue a buy order right here. And then I got the response back from Gecko saying that it, uh, it received the buy order. It's sending it to Exchange. So I can then go over to the Exchange right here and actually see the order is open. So, but I don't want it to be filled right now. So I'm gonna cancel that order. I'm gonna cancel right now. So it's now canceled. So what happens now is back in the terminal itself in the debug console, it's gonna say, oh, the trade is no longer found because I canceled it, right? So it's gonna say that. But not only that, it's gonna pop up the object. It's gonna pop up the trade object that came from on trade. Again, on trade is called when trading advisor receives the error. From the Gecko stream. So as you can see right here, the trade happened, the trade error occurred. As you can see here, like the object itself, if you click on it, you can see it and open it, and you'll see it has the advice information, trade one, but the reason is error not found because again the trade was rejected. I mean, even though you saw it in the log file here, this information wasn't available to your strategy, but it is now because the entree function is receiving this information through Trading Advisor whenever a process trade error happens. So the bottom line is this. While the event system is documented in the Gecko docs, there isn't any documentation on how to hook up a strategy so it can listen in on all the events that are generated. If you're still confused about the event system after watching this video, you should at least start using the on-trade function, which isn't even documented, but provides accurate trade info and portfolio information on completed trades.
So just a couple other things. As some of you guys know, I'm on Patreon, patreon.com slash crypto49er. If you guys like the content I provide, I truly appreciate it if you become a patron. And I just want to thank all my current patrons right now, especially uh, John Heleniak and Crypto Level Up, who um, are my most recent patrons. Truly appreciate your donations. So that's it for my video for today. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining. It isn't worth speculating. Peace out.